The official birthday of the internet is January 1st, 1983, but it was only on March 29th, 1994 when the internet was first made available in the Philippines via Sprint Link with a 64 kilobit per second connection. And yes, that's kilobit, not kilobyte. Kilobit is even smaller than kilobyte. Many people were not accustomed to it yet, and it wasn't something you'd see in every household. In my experience during that period, most just used it to check and correspond to emails. It sounds like such a mundane activity now, but back then, I remember young me being excited about what kind of emails my mom would get, because aside from letters from relatives, they were usually attached with a funny picture, an entertaining animation, or if you're lucky, a fun flash game. Today, I'm going to talk about an old flash game from my childhood that stuck with me, not because of some profound reason, but because of the ridiculousness of its premise. And that game is... <laughs> In this game, you play the role of an eco-friendly political science major, for some reason, who came home just after class to find your, and I quote, slothful, immature, and unintelligent roommate attempting to turn your beloved pet goldfish into seafood steer fry. And of course, you have to stop him by picking up the goldfish he throws on the skillet with your bare hands and put them back into the water before it's too late. At the start, your crazy roommate will only drop one fish at a time, but will gradually increase this number the longer you play. You will add another one after every 10 fish you save, making you wonder whether he's getting all these fish from and whether or not he's learned some kind of magic trick. Apparently, According to an article from foodrepublic.com, you can eat goldfish, but why would you? Their taste is reliant on their environment, so since these goldfish are basically living in a small and probably stinky bowl and eating fish flakes processed from fish, fish eggs, squid meal, worms, algae, antibiotics, and additives, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna taste really good. They're also pretty bony and they can be infected with the fish tuberculosis, which can be transmitted to humans. And yes, you can still get it even after you cook it, so don't you dare try it at home! For each fish you save, you earn 50 to 100 points, depending on how fast you bring them back to the fishbowl. The longer your fish stays flopping about in the skillet, the redder and hotter they become, and the lower the score you can earn from that fish. This also affects how long you can hold the fish in your hand. If you don't release the fish in time, your hand will get burnt, making you drop it on the ground and preventing you from picking up any fish for about 2 seconds. The thing is, sometimes this feature bugs out and you'll be stuck with a hand that keeps getting burnt randomly over and over once you've been burnt. You'll need to refresh the page or reopen the game to get rid of the bug. Your goldfish can die in two ways. The first is, of course, when they've been fried to a crisp, and the second is if you drop them and fail to pick them up in time. You have 13 seconds after a goldfish touches the skillet to save it, but only 3 seconds after a goldfish drops the ground. You could actually use this to your advantage. Sometimes when the fish is too hot already, I would just drop it on the ground to cool it off for a little bit while I busy myself with the other fish. Before the three seconds are up, I'll grab it and shove it into the fish bowl. If I manage to drop it again, it wouldn't be such a big deal because a three second countdown resets. But of course, as much as possible, it's better not to drop it if you can help it because it does waste precious time. At the start, you're only allowed to let three goldfish die before the game over screen pops up. But if you're a monster at the game, you can get an extra chance every time you hit 5,000 points. No, this is crazy. I don't have this many goldfish. However, you can only do this twice in a game with a maximum of five chances. Honestly, it's really hard to hit 10k points anyway, especially once there's so much fish on the screen. Sometimes it feels like your cursor is not picking anything up, and I'm not sure if it's because there's just so many targets and it's messing with the game, or I was just shit at it, which is... kinda... true. Unlike most single-player games these days, once you start save them goldfish, you cannot pause it. 
You have to play two to maybe up to five minutes of this madness until you've used up all of your chances and are hit with the game over screen. Depending on your performance, you'll get a different message from your goldfish. You'll even get a glimpse of the names of the creators of this wonderful game. I did notice that the person depicted as a roommate had the name of the music creator of the game, which was a fun little easter egg along with the painting of Salvador Dali in the background. I have no idea who this person is though. Now this isn't actually just a random game made by a bunch of people who just did it for fun. Though I can definitely tell they had a lot of fun with it. This is actually a promotional game for a website called ecampus.com. Not sponsored, never used it. That offers new and used textbooks for sale or rental which was launched on July 2, 1999. What's interesting about this launch date is that this was the birthday of Wendy's founder, Dave Thomas, who was actually one of the original investors of the site. Despite its rather corporate origin, the game features a very simple art style with uneven lines and a cartoonish flair that feels homegrown. Not knowing anything about the game beforehand, most would probably assume, at least I did, that this was non-profit and made by a hobbyist because of the casualness of how it presented itself. The sound design and background music was simple and not super flashy, and the graphics were drawn without much care for the accuracy of their lines. The hands were misshapen, the flames looked like they were done in a hurry, and the background is mostly loose squiggles. But what separates them from the amateurs who just started learning how to draw and make their own flash games relies on a few factors. First of all, the color scheme complements each other and is well balanced. Not a single color feels out of place. They definitely know their color theory. Second, the designer constantly used the same two fonts all throughout the game, save for some instances where a certain word has to be emphasized. This is actually one of the most important rules in design when it comes to fonts because having more than one to three font styles is sure to throw off the balance, unless that's what you're going for. Third, the rush line art can be observed even on its UI, making the overall picture feel cohesive. I feel this was done on purpose to make it more approachable to many people and not feel like someone is actively trying to sell them something. It also helps that the game was relatively easy to understand and pick up, but held a uniqueness that you'll usually only see in indie games. Though most people discovered this game later on when it was re-uploaded to sites like y8.com or the Flashpoint database where I played this game for this video, this was mainly spread by email. After exploring the game, I finally understood why. Aside from the fact that game websites weren't exactly a prevalent thing at the time, there's this little prompt down here that says, email this game to your friends. If you click it, you'll be shown a page where you can put in your name and your email address before being shown another page where you can put up to eight emails of your friends. What most would have probably missed was this small text that says, entering this email address will also register you with ecampus.com if you are not already registered. So because it's a fun mini game and it's one of those really competitive types that people will be encouraged to challenge their other friends with, they amassed members and caught the attention of a few people. And because it's a game, it's likely to attract a young audience ranging from elementary up to college and university students. The website's target market. Honestly, it's a very smart marketing tactic. I just don't really like that this little bit of text is almost hidden. I don't think my farsighted mother would have been able to read that at all. And I guess they probably had an inkling that this game was going to make rounds and become popular, so they went ahead and made merch that you can view and buy from this link, which I cannot really access anymore along with the other links in the game because it's ancient and the code for the links probably doesn't work anymore, especially after it was uploaded to this site. And even if they did work, some of the pages probably don't even exist anymore. I tried googling save them goldfish merch, but sadly I couldn't find anything, so I can't really show you what they looked like. You could still visit ecampus.com since they're still very much in business, but one thing I didn't expect to find was a TV ad that inspired the creation of the game on YouTube. Hello? 
We know you're broke. We make you less broke. eCampus.com. Textbooks and stuff. Cheap. The quality of the video is horrendous. But I am entertained by it. I kind of wish they drew the roommate in the game to look like the one in the commercial, though. eCampus actually had a bunch of these little commercials that they uploaded on their official YouTube channel that you can check out. And if you want to try your hand at a simple yet challenging game, you can find it in the Flashpoint database. If you're a little iffy about downloading the player, it has a browser version. If you do play it, comment your highest score and how many fish you've saved. Those are two different values, by the way. I found this one person who uploaded their gameplay and had a score of 8,812 and saved 111 fish. I tried beating their score and managed to get 9,376, but I only saved 105 fish. So yeah, I want to see how you guys do. You can even pop into my Discord server and post a little screenshot of it if you want. And if you don't believe that I got that score, well... I'm uploading it on the Cheesy Panini Archive. That is right, the second channel is alive once again. And no, I've, I'm never gonna... <laughs> I don't think I'll be deleting this one. I'll just be uploading VODs and whatever in there, you know. But everything else, everything else is gonna be in this channel. I've been wanting to make a video like this again for a while, but... I've just been really busy. I was actually working on a different game, but it was taking a really long time to finish. So I figured, let's do a short one and come back to that video later. I honestly feel like it might be more than an hour long. Well, we'll see, we'll see. But anyways, if you enjoy watching this kind of content, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Consider subscribing and give it a, a like, a thumbs up. And I'll see you guys later. Take it easy and stay cheesy.